It's the light that pierces through you to the darkest hidden place. It knows your deepest secrets, but it never looks away. It's the gentle hand that pulls you from the judgment of the crowd. When you stand before them guilty and you got no way out, some may call. Man, thanks guys. Good morning, everybody. Hey, so good to see uh, each and every one of you guys here this morning. Just a quick announcement. Um, we have uh, a wonderful opportunity for uh, everybody who's uh, been semi-new, um, have been checking out Laurel Church. If you guys uh, have been considering this your home church, uh, but this is kind of new to you, we have a Connection Sunday coming up January 10th. So Connection Sunday, what this is going to look like is right after church, we are going to have a catered lunch, and we're going to flip this space, and we're going to be able to catch you guys up on the vision and the values and how to be involved uh, with Laurel Church and our ministry in uh, Mid-County area. So if that is at all um, yeah, of, of interest to you, we just really want to invite you guys to be part of Connection Sunday, and that, that again is right after church. Uh, we're going to go grab some catered lunch right here in the Fellowship Hall, come back here, have a good time, 
uh, we're going to be wearing name tags, we're going to get to know each other, and then be able to uh, get to know how to be involved uh, further um, as we do ministry in Mid-County area. Uh, a little bit too about how to be uh, involved uh, right here, right before you guys in, in the chair uh, ahead of you, we got some info cards. And if you guys want to just kind of take a look briefly, um, we have a get informed card, a get connected card, and a get uh, involved card. So again, you can just kind of scan what this looks like, get informed. This kind of is our monthly schedule, a uh, month in advance of everything that's happening in and around Laurel Church and the ministry that's taking place. Get Connected is all of our seven small group uh, information. And uh, we have seven small groups. We meet in homes, and it's just a wonderful time to break bread, to just be in fellowship, dive into scripture, and praise uh, our Lord and Savior. And then uh, to get involved, again, this is kind of outreach ministry of how to get involved uh, as we partner specifically with the Meridian School District. And with that being said, in the lobby, before you guys go, and if you feel led, we have little shopping coupon uh, cards. And these coupons... Uh, of just various items, whether that be milk or eggs or flour or whatever you pick up. Uh, this is just a reminder that the next time you go shopping, go ahead and pick up whatever item is on your car. Drop it off here at the church, and we do home deliveries to Meridian School District families who are in need. And so if you uh, want to go shopping next time you're out, go ahead and just grab one of these cars before you go and pick something up for another family. Uh, that would be just a huge blessing for them. We're going to continue to worship, uh, but if you're able and willing, can you guys just stand with me and pray? Father, we love you, and we're so thankful that you first loved us. God, we, um, we just celebrate again uh, your birth, your first coming, Jesus. Um, and this is just more than a single service, a, a candlelight Christmas Eve service. It's more than just a, a day on Christmas Day. We remember your first coming. We, we remember and rejoice in your life and ministry. We remember and are so thankful for your substitutionary sacrificial death on the cross. We remember and we rejoice at your resurrection and we know and we are so excited for you to come back again. We love you. And I just ask, Holy Spirit, that in these moments you capture our minds and our hearts. There's so many distractions. There's so many voices. There's just even a lot of different uh, wrestlings and struggles internally that each and every one of us are going through. But I pray that in this time, in these moments that we share together, that you quiet our souls, that you lift our eyes. And that we enter into a place of praise and worship and complete admiration of who you are and what you've done for us. We love you, Jesus, and it's in your name we pray. All God's people say, amen. amen. Let's worship. <laughs> Jesus is waiting there. 
Jesus is waiting, God so loved the world. Amen. the world. to speak of him with everyone we know and those that we don't know <laughs> people that we meet strangers in the street the lost and we need to tell him of how much we love our Jesus
Be seated. Thank you, Brett. First, I want to begin by thanking everyone that's been praying for me for this morning. And I'm thankful that God sees you because there's not enough room up here for all of you to stand behind me. I want to give a special thanks to my wife, a very special gift from God. Thank you, honey, for all your prayers, your support. And because of you, the Lord's able to use me when he calls on me. I want to thank Pastor Joey for the opportunity to share this morning and he checked in on me about three times. Um, and uh, it's kind of funny, it's, you know I like to do a lot with notes. So one of the times, I think it was near the first one, and he called and he says, how's it going? And he goes, just fine, I only have one problem. I have 1,800 pages of notes. 
<laughs> you're laughing. It wasn't funny for me. <laughs> then you're going to find out why. But here it is. Here's my notebook. And uh, usually I have something kind of churning in my heart when the Lord gives me an opportunity to speak. This time I didn't have anything. So when Joey asked me, at first I kind of panicked when I got the email. And I called him and I thought, I don't have anything on my heart to share. And then I go, but Lord, I told you if you ever ask me to minister in a certain way, I'll always say yes. So I talked to Joey and I said, okay, yes. And after I hung up, I go, Lord, we got a problem. <laughs> I have no idea what to say. And oftentimes when I pray, sometimes it takes a couple days, but I noticed that I, for a couple days I was um, kind of humming a song, like in the car or just, you know, in the shower, just kind of humming. I was going to hum for you, but after they're singing, I decided I better not. Um, but I don't know, maybe it was two or three days, and I kind of thought, what am I humming? And it was standing, standing, standing on the promises of God. And I go, hmm, maybe that's what God wants me to share this morning. Standing on the promises of God. You know, I've been hearing so much the uncertainty, the, the difficulties of this time that we are in right now. Pastor Joey, the beautiful messages on the incarnation just touched my heart. And his um, Christmas Eve service, did you put it online? Well, you got to put it on YouBook too. For some of us that don't do on, but the uh, Christmas Eve service was so good that that like when Jesus was born, it was a time like this that we're living in. So I was just struggling with, I'm going like, Lord, I want to minister to these people because your people have been ministering to Chris and I, and I want to give them something really good. So boy, the notes were flying all over the place. And then God kept paring them back, which was the hardest thing for me to do. And I thought, what, what, you know, what can I share? What's going to minister to the people? And it kept coming back to just standing on the promises of God. How are we going to make 2021? Been hearing people from Israel around the world online with them and just going that this is a time of uncertainty. Some of you have gone through amazing trials and tribulations this past year, 2020. Our heart, literally, we have cried with you at home while we're praying for you. I'm just at times overwhelmed. And then God keeps bringing me back to this. Stand on the promises of God. I have a, a number of Bibles at home, as many of you might have. And uh, one of them, I kind of call it my study Bible, so I write in it, I underline it. Um, the Gideons have a, a New Testament and Psalms. It's paperback. And I've had some people that go like, I never write in my Bible. Well, I could see. If you have a beautiful one like this, it's leather. Smells good and everything. And Chris says, I'm not writing in my Bible. I want it to be fresh every time. Well, I have one that I underline and write in. And this one is kind of nice. I don't know if you can see it. It's a little bigger print. Doesn't have any Bible helps. No other um, cross-references or anything. And I thought, it's paperback. Somebody might not be afraid to write in this. So if you want one of these, it's the ESV put out by the, the Gideons. I have enough copies for as many people as want one. Either online, um, contact the church. If you're here, you can c contact me. I have two of them right here. But I thought, you know, this would be an easy one to just go ahead and mark with a crayon or highlight or with a pen. The margins are so small, there's not really enough room to, to write around them. But I thought, how would neat would this be if this was your book of promises? A couple of times I was very kind of just stressed out with everything. And I just started reading through my Bible where I had highlighted the promises of God. And I got tingles. And I just started feeling really up. And I didn't turn the news on. So I kept going for longer the feelings that I have. So as I was also thinking, I thought, you know, this is the time of New Year's resolutions. It's kind of the end of, the, of a, a year. People are doing that. And I thought, Lord, usually when I make them, I break them within the first week. But this is one that I would like to invite you to join me in making a New Year's resolution 
And it's simply this. Father, I'm going to stand. And do everything that you can to stand, stand firm. For 2021, my goal is to stand firm on the promises of God. Now the message. This will be different. Um, I kept trying to put little things in and the Lord just kept saying, my word, my word, my word. I don't want you to take notes. I just want you to sit back. I want the Holy Spirit to minister to you. I'm going to be reading scripture. I'm not going to give you the address. I just want the Holy Spirit to minister to your heart. And I kept thinking, I'm going like, but Lord, this is a really good verse. We don't have this one. And I just, no. But this one. And then somebody would share a verse with me, and I'd go, oh, that's such a good verse. we got to share that one. No. I don't know how I came up with the verses I have. And even Saturday, I went to highlight one to delete it on the computer. And I just felt like, no, don't do that. I went, you know, you know it's like your conscience voice. Don't do that. So, what you have this morning is the promises of God. Let's pray, and I'll begin sharing. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for the Holy Spirit who has breathed into us your word. Holy Spirit, may you open our ears this morning to hear the voice of God. May you open our eyes to see Jesus Christ in our life through 2020 and even to have eyes to see you, Jesus, with us, your presence in 2021. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would open our hearts to receive your word. May you fall upon us now. May you breathe your breath into us. For each time we open your word, there you are. We are having an encounter with Almighty God, the God of the universe, who is our Father. Bless your breath this morning. In Jesus' name and for his glory, amen. Now the message starts. Standing on the promises of God, the law of the Lord is perfect, restoring the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true. They are righteous altogether. They are more desirable than gold, yes, than much pure gold. Sweeter also than honey and the drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, your servant is warned by them. In keeping them, there is great reward. Who can discern his errors? Acquit me of hidden faults. Also keep your servant back from presumptuous sins. Let me not have them rule over me. Then I will be innocent. And I will be blameless of great wrongdoing. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. For all scripture is God breathed and it's profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be adequate, equipped for every good work. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, seeing that His divine power has granted to us everything pertaining to life and godliness through the true knowledge of Him who called us to His own glory and excellence. For by these He has granted to us His precious and magnificent promises so that by them you may become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world by lust. You see, standing on the promises of God will give you salvation. And this is eternal life. That they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. 
And it shall be that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Therefore, repent and return, so that your sins may be wiped away, in order that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven that has been given among mankind by which we must be saved. Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. But now have been, we have been freed from sin, those who have been enslaved to God. You derive your benefit, resulting in sanctification and the outcome, eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gracious gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. And if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart a person believes, resulting in righteousness. And with the mouth he confesses, resulting in salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord is Lord of all abounding in riches for all who call on him. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, this person is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. Now all these things are from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, namely, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not counting their wrongdoings against them. And he has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were making an appeal through us. We beg you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. He made him who knew no sin to be sin in our behalf, so that we might become, I love this, the righteousness of God in him. For God has not destined us for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we will live together with him. This is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who wants all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. This is the covenant which I will make with them, after those days, declares the Lord, I will put my laws upon their hearts and write them on their mind. And their sins and their lawless deeds, I will remember no more. The Lord is not slow about his promises, as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not willing for any to perish, but for all to come to repentance. I am writing to you, little children, because your sins have been forgiven on account of my name. You see, when we stand on the promises of God, He will give us the blessings of the Holy Spirit. But when He, the Spirit of truth, comes, He will guide you into all the truth, for He will not speak on His own. But whatever He hears, He will speak, and He will disclose to you what is to come. Peace be to you, just as the Father has sent me, I also send you. And when He had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Peter said to them, Repent, and each of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far away, as many as the Lord our God will call unto himself. And I remember the word of the Lord, how he used to say, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Now, we have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, so that we may know the things freely given to us by God. For who has known the mind of the Lord? Who will instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Do you not know that you are a temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? 
Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you have been bought for a price. Therefore glorify God in your body. For as many are the promises of God, in Him they are yes. Therefore through Him also is our amen to the glory of God through us. Now He who establishes us with you in Christ and anointed us is God, who also sealed us and gave us the Spirit in our hearts as a pledge. But we all, with unveiled faces, looking as in a mirror at the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as from the Lord, the Spirit. And you see, when we stand on the promises of God, when we purpose in our hearts to do that this year, He will give us faith. But Jesus, overhearing what was being spoken, said to the synagogue official, Do not be afraid, only believe. Jesus said unto him, Because you have seen me, do you now believe? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. As is written, the righteous one will live by faith. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we also have obtained our introduction by faith into this grace in which we stand and we celebrate in hope of the glory of God. You see, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Nevertheless, knowing that a person is not justified by works of the law, but through faith in Christ Jesus, even when we have believed in Christ Jesus, so that we may be justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law. Since by the works of the law, no flesh will be justified. Now, that no one is justified by the law before God is evident. For it is written, the righteous one will live by faith. Therefore, the law has become our guardian to lead us to Christ, so that we may then be justified by faith. Now, faith is the certainty of things hoped for, a proof of things not seen. Because without faith, it's impossible to please Him. For the one who comes to God must believe that He exists and that He proves to be one who rewards those who seek Him. Is anyone among you sick? Then he must call for the elders of the church. And they are to pray over Him, anointing Him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will restore the one who is sick. And the Lord will raise him up. And he who has committed sins... They will be forgiven him. For whoever has been born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. When we stand on the promises of God, he gives us hope. And hope does not disappoint. Because the love of God has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Rejoicing in hope, persevering in tribulation, devoted to prayer. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. So that you will abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. For we through the Spirit by faith are waiting for the hope of righteousness. We are looking for the blessed hope and the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Christ Jesus, who gave himself for us to redeem us from every lawless deed and to purify for himself a people for his own possession, eager to do good works. But when the kindness of God our Savior and his love for mankind appeared, he saved us, not on the basis of our deeds, which we did in righteousness, but in accordance with his mercy, by the washing of regeneration, by the renewing of the Holy Spirit, whom he richly poured out upon us 
through Jesus Christ, our Savior, so that by being justified, by grace, we have been made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to His great mercy has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to obtain an inheritance which is imperishable, undefiled, will not fade away. It's reserved in heaven for you who are protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. But according to His promise, we are looking for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Oh, beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not appeared as yet what we will be. We know that when He appears, we will be like Him, because we will see Him just as He is. Amen. <laughs> Gotta throw that. And everyone who has this hope set on Him purifies Himself just as He is pure. And when we stand on the promises of God, we receive his love. For God so loved the world, it was sung this morning, we sang it, that he gave us his only son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. For the Father himself loves you, because you have loved me and have believed that I came forth from the Father, so that Christ may dwell in your heart through faith, and that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width, what is the length, what is the height, what is the depth, to know the love of Christ which surpasses knowledge so that you may be filled up to all the fullness of God. Now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father who has loved us and given us eternal comfort and good hope by grace, comfort and strengthen your hearts in every good work and word. Oh, see how great a love the Father has given us, that we would be called the children of God, and in fact, we are. For this reason, the world does not know us, because it did not know Him. By this, the love of God was revealed in us, that God has sent His only Son into the world, so that we may live through Him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that He loved us, and He sent us His Son to be the propitiation for our sins, because we have come to know and have believed the love which God has for us. For God is love, and the one who remains in love remains in God, and God remains in us. This love is perfected with us, so that we may have confidence in the day of judgment, because as He is, we also are in this world. There is no love in Pardon me, there is no fear in love. But perfect love drives out fear because fear involves punishment. For the one who fears is not perfected in love. We love because He first loved us. The fruit of the Spirit, the first three, love, joy, peace. You see, standing on the promises of God will give you joy. These things I have spoken to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be made full. For his anger is but for a moment. His favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may last for the night, but a shout of joy comes in the morning. And though you have not seen him, you love him. And though you do not see him now, but you believe in him, you greatly rejoice with joy, inexpressibly full of his glory, obtaining as the outcome of your faith the salvation of your souls. For the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. So rejoice in the Lord. Again I say, rejoice. Because when we stand on the promises of God, He will give you His peace. Do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. And if there, this was not so, I would have told you. Because I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I am coming again and will take you to myself so that where I am, there you also will be. 
but you see the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. He will teach you all things, and he's going to remind you of all that I said to you. You see, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled nor fearful. These things I have spoken to you so that in me you may have peace. In the world, you will have tribulation. But take courage. I have overcome the world. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely and may your spirit and soul and body be kept complete without blame at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And now may the Lord of peace himself continually grant to you peace in every circumstance. The Lord be with you all. And may the promises of God bring you comfort. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our affliction, so that we will be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the same comfort with which we ourselves experienced and were comforted by God. Because, you see, when we stand on the promises of God, there is victory in our life. Now, if we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with Him, knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, is never to die again. Death no longer is master over Him. For the death that He died, He died to sin once for all. But the life that He lives, He lives to God. So you too consider yourselves to be dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Because there is no temptation which has overtaken you except something which is common to mankind. And God is faithful, so he will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation, he will provide the way of escape also, so that you will be able to endure it. But thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ. And through us, he reveals the fragrance of the knowledge of him in every place. Because I can do all things through him who strengthens me. For since he himself was tempted in that which he was suffered, he is able to come to the aid of those who have been tempted. And you see, I want to wrap it up with, we have see, received these promises, and standing on the promises of God will give you grace. For sin shall not be master over you, because you are not under the law, but under grace. He has said to us, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is perfected in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, I would rather boast about my weakness so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Grace to you and peace from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins so that he might rescue us from this present evil age according to the will of our God and Father. For he gives a greater grace. Therefore, it says... God is opposed to the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Submit, therefore, to God. Resist the devil. He will flee from you. Come close to God, and he will come close to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts. Don't be double-minded. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our wrongdoings according to the riches of his grace. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ was more than abundant with the faith and love which are found in Christ Jesus. It is a trustworthy statement, deserving full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am foremost. Yet for this reason I found mercy, so that in me, as the foremost sinner, Jesus Christ might demonstrate his perfect patience as an example for those who would believe in him for eternal life. He who saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and his grace, which was granted to us in Christ Jesus for all eternity. It has now been revealed by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who has abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. You, therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. 
For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all people, instructing us to deny ungodliness and worldly desires and to live sensibly, righteously, and in a godly manner in this present age. But we do see him who has made for a little while lower than the angels, namely Jesus, because of his suffering, death crowned with glory and honor so that by the grace of God, he might taste death for everyone. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Do not be misled by varied and strange teachings, for it is the good heart to be strengthened. We are strengthened by grace, not by foods, through which those who were so occupied, they didn't benefit. After you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ will himself self perfect, he will confirm, he will strengthen, he will establish you now and in 2021. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. Not by might, not by power, but by what? My spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Who are you, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel you shall become a plain. And he shall bring forth the capstone, which is Jesus Christ. And we sh shall shout grace, grace to it. As we're coming to communion now, whatever mountain is in your life, whatever mountain you faced in 2020, Whatever mountain you think you see on the horizon in 2021, I want you to know that by the power of the living God, not by our strength, not by our power, but by His power, He is able to make our paths straight. He is able to give us all of the blessings of His promises. And as you're going to be preparing your heart to take communion, I want you to say grace, grace to whatever your mountain is. If it's financial, speak grace, grace into that mountain. If it's physical, speak grace, grace. It's His grace into your mountain. If it's emotional, if it's a relationship, whatever it is, and we will have the joy of seeing God leveling those mountains for His glory. As we take communion this morning, I want you to know that here at Laurel we have an open communion. And that means... That communion is a time of remembering. It's a time of celebration. Yes, it is sacred. But for those who remember that Jesus Christ gave his body for our healings, that by his stripes he bore so that we might be made whole, and by his shed blood on the cross we might have the redemption of our sins, those are the ones who are able to partake of communion. And... After I pray, go to the sides and you may go ahead and pick up the bread and the cup. And I've asked Brian to fix a tray. If you're not able to, to go to the side to get the elements, just raise your hand and we'll have one that will come around and serve you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the work of your Spirit which you have done in our lives. We give you all glory and honor. Lord Jesus, Thank you that you have given us eternity to worship you, to praise you, and to give you thanks for taking our infirmities on your body and then imputing your wholeness into ours. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We're going to take the cup because you took all of my judgment, all of the wrath of the Father on my sinful, self-centered way. You took it all. And then you imputed to me your righteousness. Thank you for this celebration this morning that we may take and eat and drink of the cup. We thank you, Jesus, in your precious name. Amen. Go ahead. Take the elements. Go back to your seat, please, and wait. And we will take it, the elements together.
as we come to the bread. It is written, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Take and eat. Thank you, Jesus. Grace, grace. Thank you, Jesus. Where sin abounds, grace much more abounds. Thank you, Lord. In the same way, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Drink. And now, we look forward to the day when we will sing in heaven. And until that day, may we sing in our heart, in spirit and truth, by the Holy Spirit. Worthy are you to take the book and to break its seals, for you were slain and purchased for God with your blood men from every tribe and tongue and people and nation. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessings. And every created thing which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and on the sea and all things in them, we're saying to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honor and glory and dominion forever and ever. May we stand on the promises of God this coming year to the glory of the King of kings, the Lord of lords, in whose name we have worshipped this morning. Amen.
your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. change here, but to celebrate standing on the promises this morning, we throw back a little bit. And how could you not do this song? You, you, you couldn't. After that, I just got to tell Jim how much I appreciated that. As somebody who doesn't read their Bible as much as they should, I confess. I could, I could listen to Jim read it all day. In fact, if you... If you want to record the entire thing for me sometime in your spare time, that would be greatly appreciated. <laughs> Have a great week, Laurel Church. Go and be in light to the world. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God. My